Today I'm going to show you how to go from this, which is my Node MCU breakout board, to this, which is an LED light controller. <coughs> so what I did is I used my Node MCU breakout board, a 3D printed enclosure, and these WS2812 LED strips. Put them in all of the windows of my house and link them all with my open hub home automation suite. Basically every night I had a different effect show up. I had the lights turn on at dusk and turn off at midnight. And like I said, every day I would switch to a different effect. Now for the effects I use Brawl Automation's GitHub project that brings in a different number of uh, Node MCU effects, connects them via Mosquito, topic that he subscribes to and parses JSON packages from the home automation system to select the effect, select brightness, color, power settings. So basically I ended up using that. I did add a couple of my own effects to this. Kind of like a sign based, sign function based hue changing effect. Random stars, which is just basically a blue sky with uh, different random pixels turning on and off slowly. Kind of starting night effect cycle through different stars being turned on. Yeah, this thing is uh, very quick to respond. This is a very cool candy cane effect. So there's plenty of effects in this. There's like 20 different effects in this in Brawl Animations code. And with all of these being installed in all my windows, um, it ended up being a very cool kind of Christmas decoration. I didn't have to uh, spend any time on the ladder hooking up Christmas lights. Basically, I hooked these up to the windows. I used the aluminum channel for the door frames. Alright, so what is this basically made of? Obviously, you have the WS2812 strip, which I will disconnect right here. It's pretty simple, actually. Um, these WS2812 strips out of the box come with a 3-pin JST type header connector and plus and minus. Now the strips that I use are all 5 volt. I like that because I don't have to use an additional uh, converter to get 5 volts for the Node MCU board. I just hook them up to these DC plugs and put in a 5 volt power supply into it. You know any spare charger you have that puts out 5 volts, you know wall wart that you can use. Depending on the length of the strip, you're obviously going to need a different amperage for these. So I recommend going with at least a 2.5 amp power supply. If you're going to go with a longer strip, say 50 or 60 uh, LEDs and higher. For some of my windows, I only had to go with the 27, you know, 27 or so LEDs. And for that, I could get away with using a one amp but you know for, for for my garage door i had to put in 180 led strip which for that one i used a proper pc type power supply so it really depends on the length of the strip you're using these uh these leds use about 50 50 milliamps per pixel you know so you just multiply that by the number of leds you have and that should give you the required power draw so I'm going to show you basically how, how to build one of these. This is the LED controller version of my breakout board with, uh, with the Node MCU. And it's basically a 3D model, um, 3D printed enclosure, like you see here. Very basic. I tried to make it as simple as possible. It has little ear tabs to uh, mount it on the wall. You can put it together using four screws to uh, to hold it in place but I found that even you know with, with the precision of my printer the way it prints these enclosures they actually fit quite snugly so I can snap it in place and not be worried about it if I wanted to I could add a dab of super glue or something just to uh, hold it together and that is the enclosure the uh, PCB is very well held in place and I have an opening for both the USB, the micro USB port of the 
Node MCU itself, as well as any of the external connectors that I add to the PCB. So if I had, you know, in this case I have an LED controller, one of these JST connector type cables. So for the for purposes of this device, which is the LED controller, I need to take my breakout board with the Node MCU on top of it. I'm actually gonna take the Node MCU off for now. And I want to attach the LED controller JST cable. And the way I'm going to attach it is I'm going to split the wires here. I'm going to split all three wires. Red is the plus 5 volts, white is the ground, and green is the signal cable. Now, based on the Node MCU pinout, the bottom pin on the, on the left side is 5 volts plus. The second from the bottom is ground. And then for the signal cable, I'm actually using channel D4. So it's the fifth pin down the second column here. That is where I need to hook up the green wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strips. I'm going to strip out a little bit of wire here. Strip off a little bit of the insulation here on all three of these wires. I'll start with the 5 volts. I'll go in from the top here and start around the bottom so best way I found to do this is just to lay it down like this that holds the wire in place I have my iron all heated up I'm going to apply a little heat okay. got that wire in place I'm going to take the second wire, I'm actually going to need to separate these a little bit more because the green wire which is in the middle goes to the other side and it needs to be split out. The white wire like I said goes to the second from the bottom on the left side that is the ground connection that's it and the third wire like I said now for this I'm gonna route the wiring the way I want to route it in the end so basically I'm routing it up this is how it's going to sit in the enclosure so I'm going to route it up and then down the middle here and then this part is going to stick out of the little hole in the enclosure so I'm going to need to make sure I have enough I do have enough one two three four five Okay, so now all three wires are in place, that is pretty much it. Now I'm just going to need to put my Node MCU back on, making sure that the USB connector is on the same side as the wiring connector here. I'm going to pull the cable snug here because I need to make sure it fits in the enclosure. And I'm going to stick it into the enclosure. Okay, it's in place. I can see the USB cable coming out the side. This board fits very well within the enclosure. I'm going to lock it in place. And that's it as far as building the LED controller. The next step is to put the software on, do our configuration, and get it hooked up to our automation system. Now, the way I have this wired up, it minimizes the amount of connections and cables going back and forth. So this is basically how the LED strips come. They come with the male JST 3-pin connector, the WS2812 strips at least. This pin handles the timing and the data connection in basically in one wire. So because of the way these are pre-wired, I'm able to use these plus and minus leads as my power connections. Those go to the strip, the, and the power that goes into the strip also comes back on these two wires. So that allows me to use the strip's power connection to power the LED controller itself. And this basically means that I have only two real 
connection points, no other components externally. I think this makes the project look a little bit cleaner than having voltage regulators in the path.